So I'm here with uh, Dwight Decker from the Reading Symphony Orchestra. Dwight, welcome. Thank, Thank you very you. much for coming. Well, pleasure uh, to be here. So tell me a little bit about the Reading Symphony. How long has Reading had a symphony? Uh, it started in uh, 1931. So we're now in our 83rd season, uh, coming to the end of the season. Uh, we typically uh, rehearse and uh, from September through May. We do three concerts, generally one in November, right before Thanksgiving, then a March concert, and then in May we do our annual Pops concert, which is coming up just in a week and a half on the 22nd of May. And, uh, and, and then the summer we, we sort of, uh, we all take a break and then we, we get back together in September. Um, so, do you have one place that you play? Do you, do you vary the, the location? Uh, generally, we most of our concerts have been, in recent years, at the Reading Memorial High School. Uh, in past years, we have been at Parker, I can remember, a ways back. And then on occasion, we'll, we'll play in another venue in another town. Uh, some, ca some cases, it's a matter of scheduling. Uh, other cases, there may be, we may be motivated to try to go on the road and, and uh, play in a neighboring town, that sort of thing. So it's a matter how the opportunities come up. And what type of work have you played recently? Well, at our March concert, we, uh, we did Schubert's Unfinished Symphony and Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. So we sort of advertise that as a concert of, of doing two iconic pieces from the literature that sort of define the, the symphony literature. And uh, in the November, we did a Dvorak cello concerto. Uh, the cellist was from the Handel and Haydn Society, and, and then Tchaikovsky's Fifth Symphony. So, you know, very much the, your classic repertoire. Uh, our concert, uh, Pops concert, in a week and a half is uh, called The Invitation to the Dance. And that will be things ranging from Strauss waltzes to Glenn, Mid Mid uh, Glenn Miller uh, swing band uh, music and some Bernstein and a few things in between. Now, in terms of the, uh, the members currently, mm -hmm. what, what, what We're, it's about 50 musicians. Most, they're mostly amateur musicians. We have a few retired pros. And uh, they range, we're very much a multi-generational group. We range from some, some, can be high school, up to people who are retired. And they're mostly uh, from towns here in this part of uh, Massachusetts, though we have a few that come down from New Hampshire on Tuesday nights. And one person comes up from Connecticut. Uh, well, actually, I guess they work in Boston, so they come rehearse and drive home to Connecticut. Well, you mentioned pro, so what do you, what do you when you say well, professor. They were professionals, and they've retired, and and so we have a few that will will play with us just to kind of keep keep their hand in. So, just to inform the viewers, so with an orchestra, um, is there um, I don't want to use the wrong word, I, not a cadence, but there's a certain is there a certain uh, depend of you know with the different sections, um, mm -hmm. how do you bring someone into the orchestra? I mean, someone that a group that's been around for so long and it played with the, you know, is there, a, is there a difficult task to bring in a new? Oh, no. I mean, because it's like any organization, people will retire or jobs, they will move. And, and you're, uh, we're, we're often looking for, we may be short of a particular instrument. We, we need four French horns and we have two French horns. And, and you're always, you'd like to have a full complement that could be at every rehearsal. So every year we're, we may be auditioning a few people for select, you know, we, we need a second bassoon, we need a third horn. You can always use more strings. So, so uh, the, there can be a, a yearly turnover and then there are people who are there for, I, I've been there for 40 years. So you, you have the whole range of, of, of longevity in terms of. Uh, you know, if you do need a, a bassoon or a viol, how do you get the word out? What's, what's the, how do you do well, our, we have someone who handles personnel, and we have, uh, of course, these days, you have an Excel spreadsheet, and we have lists of musicians, uh, and, and people have, uh, our conductor may have contacts, and so there are, there are certain people that you, if you're really desperate and the concert's two weeks away, uh, certain people who will just come in for uh, a fill in, those tend to be people who may be almost semi-pro just because they have to be able to come in and, and, and pick it right up. We, we prefer, uh, in a sense, a, an amateur who's willing to give a commitment to be there for the whole cycle of going through 10 rehearsals and then playing a concert. But you usually end up, you've got to fill a few holes uh, just to make it work. 
Now you have something on your website too that actually has, uh, if there are any openings? Or any oh yes, we have all that sort of information on the website about uh, what the programs are going to, what the next year, well not yet. Uh, next month we'll figure out our program for next year. But uh, if you're interested in auditioning for the orchestra, if you're interested in being a patron of the orchestra, all the sort of, st the standard things you'd expect of a, of a, uh, of an organization like ours. Okay, so let's say I have some violin experience and I want mm -hmm. to volunteer for the Reading Symphony Orchestra. I go to your website and I see there's an opening for a, not a soloist, but a violin player. Mm -hmm. be, what happens next? So I want to... Uh, well, right you would you'd send an email, uh, which would go to the personnel, whoever is the, our personnel person at the time, and, and then to the, c the conductor director, because essentially you'll end up auditioning for the conductor. And depending on if, whether you were a violin or some other instrument, it may be a case that, well, we're, we're good there, there's, n there's no point. If, if it's a case, we can always use another violin, uh, they'll say, uh, they may say, come in, we'll listen to you play and, and, and see if it, if it can work. Is there a certain piece that they have to play? Or is it bring what, like, how do you, what do they, what does the artist bring with them? Do uh, that would, I think that would be typically you'd bring something to play uh, that, that you want, want to play. I, uh, yeah, it, 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 it's not terribly uh, formal for this, this organization. They're, 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 it isn't like the, the Boston Symphony where you, 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 you have to go behind a curtain and have a committee. Much, no, it's... it's, it's in the shadow, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, th this, this is... We're a, we're a fairly friendly, friendly group, very uh, uh, inclusive group. We, we, we try to make everyone be comfortable, so we don't make it, don't make it a hard process. All right, so for the viewers, uh, a couple of events you mentioned. Uh, go, let's go over those again. The events you have coming up. Well, we have our Pops concert. Uh, that'll be in a week and a half, May 22nd, at the high school at 3.30 as a, as a Sunday. And, uh, and that's the last concert of, this, of this, this season. And then we'll start up. We'll start our rehearsal start in September, and we'll have a November concert. Uh, well, I hope it'll be at I can't say it is can't because it. I haven't, we haven't started to get the venues and that sort of thing. And your website again? www.readingsymphonyorchestra.org. Very good. And I'll just, if you Google, be careful because there is also a Reading Orchestra in Reading, Pennsylvania. And on occasion, people, I've gotten some emails from people who think I'm in Pennsylvania. So uh, if you're just Googling it, make sure you're in the Massachusetts one. Yes. Dwight, thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure. Okay, thank you. Yeah.